Here's a picture with Elio Gracie and I, and I believe this was taken in 1997. I was about 18, 19 years old. This seminar was in Pennsylvania, and a lot of people that would train with Elio Gracie would be doing it at a seminar such as this. There's about 50 plus people. This was just before I moved to California to when I was accepted into the Gracie Jiu Jitsu Instructors Program in Torrance. At that point, Elio would come out to do um, classes, and I got to take a lot of semi private lessons with Elio. Hi, my name is Tony Pazensky. Today we're going to go to the Gracie Jiu Jitsu Academy in Torrance, California. It's February 7th, and we're going to celebrate the life of Elio Gracie. I want to talk about Elio Gracie, one of the experiences that I had with him when I was at the Gracie Jiu Jitsu Academy in Torrance. This is back in 1998 and 99. I was very young, blue belt, uh, just came there from Philadelphia, and it was my dream to go out to California and do Jiu Jitsu. And anytime Elio Gracie came out, it was always a special experience because you know, I was thinking that he could show us techniques and that I could learn right from the master. So when I found out last week that he died, I said a prayer right away because he influenced martial arts around the world with jiu-jitsu and uh, Gracie jiu-jitsu. One, one funny story I have of Elio is one, when we had the experience of being in the instructor's program, we always had to clean up and fold towels and clean the bathroom and things like that. And in the back, um, I was folding the towels the way I was taught to do it in a more efficient way, detailed manner. And Elio came by and just kind of bumped me aside. Basically, he, he said some words, but I didn't understand what he said. But he, basically said, like, let me do it. Let me show you how to do it. Let me make it easier for you. And he just started folding towels. And I, I guess been doing, I must have been doing something very simply wrong. I don't know what it was. But he just showed me how to do the towels, how to fold them better. And then he went on with his, his, the rest of his walk and walked out of the building. So that was like my first uh, experience with him off the mats, uh, learning how to fold towels to the Gracie Jiu Jitsu band. was taken from a book that was published in Brazil in 1930, I believe. And as you can see, it says Carlos Gracie, Introduction to Jiu-Jitsu. On the bottom, we have a picture of Elio and Carlos passing the guard. Um, I really can't tell you how I got this photo, so it wasn't stolen or anything like that. It was actually going to be thrown away from one of my original Jiu-Jitsu instructors. It was just something that was really falling apart, and they didn't want it in the academy anymore. And it was just one of the situations that you wanted, and I said, sure. I believe it came from Hoist Gracie to my instructor, and then my instructor gave it to me, and now I hold on to it um, every chance I can. You know, if I have it in an academy, I put it up. My old academy now today, I have it in my room, so it's a good thing. Well, we're driving through Redondo right now, and Redondo's right down the street from the academy, so we'll be there in no time. Looking forward to seeing a lot of old training partners and just to see how much Elio brought the jiu-jitsu world together. And that's like the reason why we have our lives like this. Everybody say, yo, old man, give up. You know, the apple's not gonna stay on the wind. The wind is not slant. How can you put the apple here and expect it to stay? But you know how the base of the apple has little grooves? They're all different sizes. And he kept trying to think the apple, he kept watching us and then understands that the vibes are as positive as it could be. And uh, that's how he should be remembered. He's a very positive kind of guy, he had a great sense of humor. Not to mention the fact that he touched millions of people. And just to be able to, you know, in a way, touch all of us so that we can now know each other, the same plan, the same jiu-jitsu world. And uh, it's just kind of a very positive thing. And that's the way he should be remembered. That's the apple. Make a point of keeping your man in mind like that. He uh, never liked very much the whole funeral thing, you know what I'm saying? It was a little too heavy, and I hope you understand that the vibe today should be as happy as it would be. If he could, I'm sure he would skip his own funeral, you know? <laughs> 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 yeah, I'm not going to. <laughs> <laughs> so anyways, um, I have... Uh, I have... Uh, I have... Uh, Ask a couple of you to come up and say a few words. My good friend, uh, Aaron Young, who's uh, in the house, I guess, somewhere. Yeah, you here? Come start with you, because this way you help me break the ice. Yeah. Hi, everybody. Uh, 
I, uh, I first met Elio about 15 or 16 years ago when I first started training here at the old academy. And I was taking Travis with Horian and I think I was probably a, a white belt or maybe just a, maybe a blue belt. But I came in one day and I saw him standing there looking in the window at a class and uh, you know, I knew of course it was him at the red belt. So I thought, man, the guy looks like a like a bird of prey or something, <laughs> like an old eagle or something. And uh, so anyway, I went in my room. I was warming up, and then Horian walked in, and Elio came in behind him. He said, uh, Elio wants to give you the class. I said, oh, man. I was so nervous, <clears throat> but it was great. A uh, big smile, you know, of course he told me I was using too much strength, and, uh, and I was, and, uh, but he was an amazing teacher, and of course, you, when, I, I, over the years I probably had ten, maybe ten, ten classes with, with Elio, and you see that all the Gracies teach the same way, you see where it comes from, and you see that uh, they get it from the Father, and uh, I used to go to the, uh, the tournaments, I used to have to go watch the guys, you know, in the various tournaments. And I remember I used to sit next to the Elio a lot of times up on the DS, he'd always say, come on. And uh, there was, one day I was up there, Halleck was in a match, and Halleck had, uh, was probably 16, maybe, maybe 15, I don't know, but he had won his first two and then he was, uh, he was uh, competing against a man, a guy who was like 25, and Halleck lost on points. I don't know if you remember this, but, <clears throat> He came walking over, now he's just a little kid, really, he's 15 years old, his head's down, you know. He came walking over to Elio, and he says, uh, I lost. And Elio says, Alec, your grandfather's hungry, go get me a sandwich. <laughs> Yes, the sandwich, you know, and I thought, man, that's, that's great, you know, I mean, without saying it's okay to lose, you're a young guy, you're going to get experience, he just said, give me a sandwich. <laughs> and, uh,